the last day. And I'm running out of things to talk about. So. I got project number zero, uh, pro yeah, project number zero three here, so I'm gonna try that out. Well, this is different from how I normally do these pickup sections and convention videos and whatnot, because, well, now I'm in the basement, and uh, you can see I have all the games here on the table, and you can see all the games. It's not just me pulling out a game, pulling it in front of my face, and being like, oh, here's this game, playing music and whatnot. Uh, yeah, case in point, we're not doing that this year. Anyways, this is all the stuff I got at Anime North. Some of this stuff you've probably seen in clips and whatnot um, in the video. But in any case, I'm going to talk about them, mostly the story about getting them and not so much about the games because I'll save that for our gaming pickups. So let's begin. Here is the big one, the one that I probably mentioned several times, the one I'm very happy to have. Kendo Rage for the Super Nintendo. I mentioned many times in the video that this one I had to trade in some games to get, uh, you know, some cash off of this. They were asking $74 for this, essentially $75, you know, like $74.99, and I managed to get it for $28. The games I traded in were some duplicates of games I already owned, or that's all, that's redundant, uh, were basically just duplicate games that I got and a whole bunch of games that I got for free, which I'll be talking about those games I got for free in another gaming pickups video. Um, but the games I traded in to get this were Killer Instinct on the Super Nintendo, um, Mario Golf, Kobe Bryant in NBA Courtside, 1080 Snowboarding, Paper Mario, Star Wars Episode One Racer. Yeah, I believe those were the ones. Um, but yeah, I traded in those games and was able to get this for $28. In retrospective, I'm sure I probably could have got this for 20 flat. Like, I'm sure I could have talked the guy down saying, hey, can we pay 20 flat for this? Because he was saying, oh, I'll give you $46 uh, dollars in credit trade-in. And I was like, how about 50 And he said, okay. But still, could have got it for a little cheaper. But in any case, I'm extremely happy to have it, and I'm working on beating it. I'm getting pretty close, I'll say that much, with this game. Uh... Lethal Weapon on the NES, which is actually the most money and now I've ever spent for an NES game, exactly $40. The guy there was asking 50 for it, and I was like, I'll take it, how about we'll do it for 40 And he said 45 But, you know, then he saw that I only had physical cash left, which was um, $40 in physical cash left. Now, yes, I could have paid 45 on, you know, my debit card, but he was like, you know what, if 40 is all you have, then it's yours for 40 So, yeah, I ended up getting... This for 40. Uh, this is another game I've worked a little bit recently on. I'm trying to beat and getting pretty close too. Hopefully, I can beat both these very soon. Super Spike V Ball uh, in, on the NES, which is an amazing shape, by the way. Like, holy fuck. This is something I've been wanting to get because, you know, it's a volleyball game, not too many of those, and said to be a really good one, you know? It's by Tecmo and whatnot. Um, four players. Uh, got it for eight bucks. Definitely looking forward to playing more of that. Uh, here's three games for three systems. I didn't think I'd be picking up games for there, and also the first, and also while we're at it, there's four systems here which are a first for the convention. Like m meaning that, meaning that like four systems, four games for systems that are the first time I ever picked them up at a convention. Meaning like this right here is the first Switch game I ever bought at a convention. Aquamoto Racing Utopia. Thing is, you can get this game brand new at EB Games for 30 bucks. I mean, granted, with tax, it's going to be a little more. And probably in retrospect, if I would have preferred to do that, because, you know, hey, I do like to support game developers and not by buying games new. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, we did a watch us play on this. Um, didn't really give off the very best first impression, and what little I've played of it after that watch us play, still kind of like, eh, feelings on it. And, uh,. Salt Suit Lanos for the PS4. Uh, it's, you know, part of the frickin' Assault Suit Lanos series. Started off on the Sega Genesis under the name Target Earth. Had a Super Nintendo game under the name Cybernator. Had a Saturn game. All that good stuff. 2D mech shooting action that, you know, it's like, yeah, we gotta get this. 
you know, I was like, I want to get a PS4 game there. I was like, well, this is pretty good, you know. I think I first heard about it in one of Metal Jesus' Rocks and Gems videos on the PS4, so yeah, something to do with Metal Jesus Rocks. And here's probably the biggest surprise, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash for the Wii U. Never did I think I'd be getting a Wii U game anytime soon. But in any case, uh, they were. this was a $25, and although I wasn't really looking for this game right now at the time specifically, I was like, well, for $25, that's a pretty good price even used, because I don't think used it would go for that much, and even the same vendor had it for 45 new, which was also still not too bad. So 25 used is pretty damn good for this game, although... You know, I kind of sat down and played it for half an hour once with Jason, and then I briefly looked at the menus for two minutes, and yeah, I can already tell this game is going to be quite lacking in content, but whatever, of course, we're going to give it more of a shot. And you know, hey, I guess it's a potential small goal to get a Mario game every convention I go to, though I don't think I did for uh, Con Bravo 2016, I want to say it was. Well, one of the conventions. Uh, Crimson Skies, High Road to Revenge on the original Xbox. How long is this? Okay, we're making okay time. Um, you know, it's a really common game, You, as you may know. You know, it's a plain, like, flying game. You know, you shoot down things, there's missions and whatnot. Not really my kind of game, but in this case I was actually willing to give this a shot because it looked mildly interesting and it's also an extremely cheap game. I got this for like three bucks. And it works on the 360, so what the hell, we'll show the original Xbox some love, and show the, uh, this is genre some interest, you know. Uh, here we have Soul Calibur 2 on the original Xbox, and Soul Calibur 2 on the PS2. Now, as I'm sure many of you may know, um, the three versions of Soul Calibur, GameCube, PS2, and Xbox, all have at least one exclusive character, GameCube, of course, having Link. The PS2 has Heihachi, and the Xbox has Spawn. Not quite as, you know... The exclusivity with these two characters don't make nearly as much sense, I feel, with Link on the GameCube. Not saying that they're bad, you know, I think Spawn's actually kind of a pretty good character, but Heihachi... Heihachi's from Tekken, which is also a Namco franchise. Fucking Heihachi could have been in all three versions, you know? And it wouldn't have made a difference. I don't see what's so exclusive exclusive about having him on the PS2, or even really having Spawn on the Xbox. These characters could have been all three versions, but then again, what characters would have otherwise been on here on these two versions? I don't know. But in any case, really cool to have, because hey, Soul Calibur 2 is fucking incredible. Jet X2O and uh, Hot Shots Golf 4, I bring them both out because these were both $5. Um, Jet X2 I thought was actually part of the Jet Moto series, but I guess not. It's really just another, you know, like kind of boat racing game with a fucking awful cover art, mainly that face. If you can't see it, I apologize, but goddamn. Uh, I got decent impression out of this, better than Aqua Motor Racing Utopia, at least so far, so you know, that's something. And Hot Shots Golf 4 want to get because, hey, Hot Shots Golf 3 was fucking incredible, and so was this game. This game is also fucking incredible, um, though I haven't played it nearly as much. I actually played it more one time, you know, when uh, my friend Jason came over and, you know, we played it for like an afternoon and whatnot. Really good stuff. Can't wait to play this some more. Always nice to play golf games during the summer, you know what I mean? Uh, ATV Quad Power Racing 2 for the GameCube mainly wanted because I was like, I want to get a fucking GameCube game while I'm out here. And this ended up being the last thing I got at the convention. Um, I believe that, uh, what do I mean I believe that? No, this game, I know that. This game first was a PS1 game and a Game Boy Advance game, so, yeah, who knows, maybe I'll have to get those. And you know what, this is actually not too bad. I would, I thought this would have probably been just some, like, shitty, like, low-budget game, you know, or whatnot. But it's actually kind of decent. And for five bucks, what the hell, you can't go wrong. I got uh, two Genesis games here, because uh, I was like, I want to walk out of here with some Genesis games. Though I didn't get nearly as many as I wanted to. But this one, of course, is really awesome. Shadow Dancer, The Secret of Shinobi. Of course, going to get this, because, hey, I like the Shinobi series. And you know what? I'm pretty close to having them all, actually. Uh, and even though this is on... Like, this isn't on Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, but it's on the Sega Genesis Collection on the PS2 and the PSP. 
and it plays a little more closer to the original arcade Shinobi, and, uh, well, I think it's actually a better game than, you know, the very first Shinobi, so, yeah, definitely looking forward to playing more of that. And this game, I kind of went on a whim, like, I was just kind of like, we'll, we'll see how it is, it looks kind of interesting, it's a platformer, why not? X Mutants, which is apparently based off of a comic book, uh, from what little I've played, it, yeah, it's a platformer, not a linear platformer, uh, but yeah, it was ten bucks. I could have done better, I could have done worse, I guess. I really wanted to get some more Genesis stuff and really more Sega stuff in general, but, you know, not everything that you want is there. Though they had a decent amount of Saturn stuff, I just couldn't, like, you know, get Saturn stuff. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, um, Nintendo 64 games. As you know, I am going after a complete collection of the Nintendo 64, meaning all 388 games, not just the 296 North American. And yes, I have to say that pretty much every time, because, you know, I have to make that very clear, because everybody, anyone and everybody could say, oh, I'm going after a complete N64 collection, but of course they really just mean the 296. Anyways, um, I, as I said at the start of this Anime North 2018 series, I didn't, I wanted to get more of the Japan exclusives, like potentially strike pretty good with it. And I kind of sort of did, though not as well as I wanted to, but I got some good stuff regardless. Flying Dragon, it's a fighting game. It was, I remember this mainly because this was one of the first N64 games that really like blew me away, that really, you know, enticed me and got me interested in the system in a way I never thought before when I first heard about this, like, I think 2013 or 2014. It's part of this Hiryo no Ken series. There was a second one on the N64, I think it was called SD Hiryo no Ken Densetsu. And that one's not a common game, and that was actually one of the last N64 games I ever heard of, I ended up hearing about. Um, I played this kind of once with my friends Jason and Kevin. Um, that's really all I've played of it, other than testing it. Looking forward to playing it some more. Um, these two, uh, California Speed and Monaco Grand Prix are interesting because there was a guy who was selling a bunch of N64 games. He had a very small, like, vendor, you know, kind of like, geez, like, I don't know, smaller than, like, a bathroom, I want to say. Just a really small vendor space room. And there he had a milk crate full of N64 games. And he constantly was telling people, oh, feel free to make a deal or whatnot. So these were both being sold for $15.00. So, meaning if I bought both, it would have been 30 But I bought both and ended up getting them for 20 I think I was actually um, attempting to get a third game, which was bottom of the ninth. I don't remember exactly what the price I was asking. I'm saying, oh, we'll do all three for 30 or something like that, but that didn't go through. Uh, but I ended up getting these two. Uh, California Speed's really fucking good. It's a very straightforward arcade racer, you know, a little more straightforward than other racing games, or even other arcade racing games, I suppose. But really fun. Monaco Grand Prix, another simulation type of racer. Hardly played it, but again, I'll talk about them more in the gaming pickups. Uh, how are we doing on time? Okay, we're actually doing pretty decent on time. Uh, this is Let's Smash. This is interesting, because this is one of three N64 games to be released in... Japan and Europe, but not North America. In Europe, this game is called Center Court Tennis, and it's funny, because even in my uh, Fan Expo 2014 video, you can see there's a clip of me and Jason looking through some Japanese N64 games, and then I point to a box copy of this one saying, and this one we don't know the name of, so yeah, good luck, as in good luck finding out the name of it. And well, here we are all these years later, and I'm getting a card-only copy for five bucks. And last time I checked, there actually weren't any card-only copies of this on eBay, so yeah. Uh, this game's not really giving off the best first impression, I'll just say that much, but it's probably better than All-Star Tennis 99 on the Nintendo 64. Uh, Super beat -em on Battle Phoenix 64. This I kinda got a deal on, they were saying 15. I was like, here's 10. And yeah, took it, and the guy took it right away. I probably could've got it for, you know, um, less, because this, again, this is just another example of an N64 game that nobody's gonna buy, because nobody knows what the hell it is, and it's not a North American game, so that's even less reasons why people would buy it, so, I don't know. For that reason, I probably could've got a better deal on this, and some other Japanese exclusives if they were there. This is like a mini-game compilation multiplayer sort of thing. It's confusing and potentially really lacking in substance, so, yeah. I don't know. That's just my first impression. And the last game I got here is Rally Challenge 2000. 
This game I've never seen before at any store in the city. I can find it on eBay, but I've never seen it in stores before. But, uh, so I think that's what made it all the more incentive to get this. Um, all I can say about playing it little so far is that I really wish the courses weren't so cramped, you know, because this is a rally racing game. It's supposed to be more energetic and not so concealed, sealed or whatever, I don't know. But, yeah. In any case, cool to have. Little black cartridge, you know. There's no gray variant to this, so, yeah. Uh, anyways, that's my, uh, Anime North pickups. Yeah.